Hello again YouTube. Welcome to 2020 and um, I've kicked the year off with a new bike. This is in this lovely big box here a Watt Bike Atom. Now this is probably the second most I've ever spent on a cycling purchase and it's a bike that won't ever go out of the house. Yes it's a static trainer so I guess a lot of you know what a Watt Bike is. They're very popular in uh, gyms, you know, we go to a local David Lloyd, they've got a Watt bike there. But um, the generally the ones that you find in the gyms are what they call the Watt Bike Pro. So you have on the front of those a big sort of air resistance unit and, and basically you, you vary the resistance by just moving a lever basically. Well this is the Atom, this is their latest offering. This is a interactive trainer, a smart trainer. So this will uh, link to the Watt Bike Hub, I'll talk you through that later, but more importantly for me, it'll link to Zwift. Now, this thing arrived on Christmas Eve, and we were entertaining over Christmas, and it absolutely killed me. I had to leave it in the box all over Christmas and couldn't unbox it. Um, plus the fact uh, we were going to put it in the pain cave and felt that it was such a nice thing that the pain, pain cave uh, warranted a little bit of a makeover. I've got some footage here from a previous video I shot, the bike fit video, where you can see we had like um, carpeted floor in there, there were a couple of bikes in there, bike on a on-wheel trainer. So we did the job properly. Um, and as you can see, we've got a lovely new laminate floor in there with a coat of paint and stuff like that, didn't take long. The only thing I would say, if you're thinking of laying a laminate floor and you've never done one before, just pay someone. Anyway, um, now the Watt bike wasn't the only bike that we thought about when we were looking at an indoor trainer that we could both use, and this is the benefit of the Watt bike. I mean, it's, it's better than a turbo trainer uh, because if, you've got, if you're like us where I want to use it, my wife wants to use it, with a turbo trainer you're constantly like whipping a bike out, changing a wheel, it's plava. So we were looking at a static trainer and of course my wife was drawn by Peloton. Um, and got to give it to those guys, their marketing is superb. Um, everyone I speak to is raving about, oh, what's a Peloton bike, and blah, 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 blah. But for me, it just wasn't doing it. When you look into it, um, the bike, Christ, how much is that bike? Um, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think it's a shade under two grand. So already it's like more than 400 quid more expensive than a Watt bike. Plus, you then have to buy their subscription service, 50 quid a month. Um, and as far as I can see, that bike without the subscription service is, it's just like any other exercise bike. Now I think this is where the Watt bike comes into its own because you can use this standalone with the Watt bike hub and the data you get out of that is absolutely fantastic. So let's uh, go and have a look at the bike and spin some pedals and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I appreciate that indoor training isn't for everyone, um, but you've got to say in recent years it's got tons and tons better. So um, if you get yourself a smart trainer and a couple of decent applications, you really can, one, get a lot of benefit out of it, and two, definitely a lot less boredom than you're used to with uh, turbo training. And I'd say that indoor training isn't just for um, roadies. If you ride a mountain bike, fitness is just as important to you. We're in the winter here in the UK. You get in from work, and uh, you know, even on a mountain bike with good lights, you can't get out and get a quality ride in. In my experience, uh, I, I know some people will challenge that. So um, it makes sense if you've got something like this that you can come and jump on for an hour, do a very focused interval session or something like that. It makes a lot of sense. And I mean, definitely, you know, for me this morning, woke up, everything was iced up, everything was covered in frost. I wasn't going to take the road bike out, so you can just come down and jump on this put yourself on Zwift for an hour and it flies by. So before we get into looking at the nuts and bolts, so to speak, of the bike, 
just going to walk you through the Watt Bike Hub because I really like this. This is kind of the native app uh, that comes with the bike. So it runs on iOS, runs on Android, tablet or phone. I'm running it on just a cheap Samsung tablet here, uh, Android, and it works fine. Now, the great thing about the Watt Bike Hub is that the, the variety of things that you can do with it and the variety of data that it gives you. So it's got some really, really nice interval sessions in there that really hurt, and I'm speaking from experience there. But beyond that, they've really thought about how you might use it. So there's a range of training plans that are goal-focused. So, for example, if you're doing your first sportive and you're training for that, there's a training plan that will work for that. You know, if you're doing longer rides, there's training plans for that. So a real nice mix of things that you can do with the hub and a ton of data that comes out of it as well. So let's start looking at some of the data that you can get out of this. And I'm going to begin by showing you a thing called the polar view. So you've got the circle there. And as you can see that you've got two quadrants highlighted. So you've got the top left and the bottom right. And what they represent is one full pedal stroke. So essentially, the quadrant on the top left is the downstroke on the left pedal. The quadrant on the bottom right is the downstroke on the right pedal. The line that runs through the middle that's got the... Uh, angle degrees indicator on it is showing you the angle of maximum force on each side. So theoretically, what you want to do here is you want to keep that line even on both sides so that you're applying the power at the same point in the pedal stroke on each side. But beyond that, you can use kind of that moving figure in the middle to get an insight into where you might have dead spots in your pedal stroke. If that diagram in the middle looks like a figure of eight, it means that you've got quite a dead spot in your pedal stroke. What you're aiming for is more a sort of bean sort of shape, for lack of a better way of putting that. So once you get a nice sort of rounded oval in the middle there, you know you're applying force evenly on each side, you're getting the most out of each leg. Um, and then again, you can use that line going through the middle to indicate where you're putting that force down. This is really good because you know, if you tried to uh, spot a dead spot in your pedal stroke without this sort of data, some people might be able to do it, but I don't think I could. So having this data to hand really, really helps. And it's only going to help you improve your efficiency. And let's be honest, I think cycling is all about efficiency. To give you an extreme view of this, let me just unclip one pedal and just pedal with the left. So you can see I'm just pedaling with the left there. So my um, my force is only on the left-hand side, as represented by the big bulge on the left-hand side. So hopefully that gives you an insight into some of the data that you can get out of this thing um, and how it might be useful to you. Let's go on to look at actually what it's like to ride this thing. And um, I'm going to use it with Zwift as well. So I fired up Zwift and here's what you'll see when it first loads. From this page, you can choose where you want to ride, be that the native virtual home of Zwift, Watopia, or one of the guest worlds, which rotate on a regular basis. You can see the upcoming schedule of guest worlds down in the right-hand corner here. You can also choose whether you simply want to ride a given course, or if you'd like to follow one of the many training sessions built into Zwift. Now, these are really good, and they use the controllability of the smart trainer to make sure that you're pushing out the right number of watts for a given interval. Very clever. So let's go for a ride and see what's what. On the Watt bike, or any compatible smart trainer, Zwift ramps up the resistance as you hit inclines, and the effort builds in a really nice way. Provided you're not following a training plan, you can vary the resistance according to the grade using the gears. The Atom has 22 gears, which are controlled electronically, using these shifters on the right-hand lever. The Atom has shifters on each side, uh, together with a big red function button on the top. These extra controls come into their own in the hub, but that's another video, I think. You also, in Zwift, get an indication of which gear you've shifted into. The gears are effectively in a single block, so you can change sequentially, 1 to 22, and vice versa. Now, I've read some online reviews that hanker for a more real-world feel, with 11 on a big chain ring and 11 on a little, but I really don't mind the sequential way they're organised on this bike, and if I'm honest, I think trying to emulate a front mech setup would just be a bit confusing. Like many trainers, the Atom can be a noisy beast, especially when you ramp up the output. But 
it's no louder than my old turbo. I do think that uh, the noise could be a consideration for some though, especially if you're constrained by where you can use the bike. Personally, I find the combination of the bike emulating the climbs by matching resistance to gradient, the variety of courses and the chance to get into those little scraps with other riders immersive enough to keep me entertained for up to a couple of hours some days. As riders, we all have different goals. Right now, mine is to shift some timber and rebuild some fitness. And using the Atom with both the Hub and Zwift is helping me do that. Both platforms include the main fitness tests, such as FTP, so I should be able to get some objectivity on my progress over the coming weeks. And let's not forget that jumping on the scales will also tell me the rest of the story. I'm loving the Watt bike. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. And why not tell me your thoughts on indoor training in the comments below.